to Aging Disgracefully, a weekly oddcast of seriously funny and sometimes raunchy monologues. I'm Carolyn Meyer, and I've got a story for you. Here is episode number 18, In the Nude for Love. My daddy began taking pictures of me almost from the day I was born, and he kept it up week after week, labeling each black and white snapshot with my age and the date, and then mounting the photographs in an album. There's a picture of me at the age of seven months lying naked on my belly, and <laughs> very cute. But I don't stay cute, and by the time I'm five years old, I have buck teeth because I'm addicted to sucking my thumb, and I'm nearsighted and I have to wear glasses. My brown hair is straight. My mother puts it in pigtails. You'd have to love me to think I'm adorable. My daddy does. And he keeps right on taking pictures of me and putting them in the album. But I'm not what my mother thinks her daughter should be like. My mother was a beautiful little girl. I had blonde curls, lovely smile. But I don't look like my mother, except for the blue eyes, which are now hidden behind those gold rimmed glasses. Now, because I'm an only child and I don't have kids my age to play with, my mother sends me to Miss Keller's kindergarten which I don't like much because the other kids just want to run around and play games, and I'd rather sit in a corner and listen to stories or have somebody read to me. There's a little girl in my kindergarten named Janie who is adorable. Curly hair, pearly teeth, straight, because she didn't suck her thumb. She looks like Shirley Temple. She's even taking tap dancing lessons. Everybody loves Janie. My mother loves Janie. I don't love her. I think I hate her. For the kindergarten Halloween party, my mother outfits me in a clown costume. Janie appears in a sparkly pink tutu with a golden crown perched on her curls and a magic wand with a star at the end. And Janie is picked to lead uh, the kindergarten kids in a parade around Miss Keller's house. The jealous clown brings up the rear. I earn to be pretty like Janie. A couple of years later, there's a war going on, and my daddy joins the Army Air Corps. He's sent overseas, and my mother takes snapshots to send him while he's gone. I'm 10 years old when the war is over and daddy comes home. And for my 12th birthday, he gives me a brownie box camera. And I persuade my friend Sandy to take pictures of me, stark naked and posed glamorously on my bed like Goya's Spanish naked Maha or Manet's French Olympia. I've never seen either of these paintings or any other paintings of nudes. So I have no idea where I got the inspiration to pose naked for a photograph. At the age of 12, I have neither boobs nor bush, and I yearn for both. But for some reason, at that time, taking nude pictures of me seemed like a good idea, a glamorous idea. And I want to be glamorous even more than I want to be pretty. And so I pose, and Sandy snaps the shutter. Fortunately, we don't take the film to the local drugstore to be developed. This is a small town, and the owner of the drugstore is a friend of my dad's. But my aunt in Philadelphia has passed on to me my older cousin's darkroom set with all the necessary chemicals. Sandy and I will develop the film ourselves. We take the exposed film of my exposed body to the cellar and improvise a dark room. Sandy crouches in the coal bin with a flashlight and reads the instructions while I slosh the film in the chemical baths that I've mixed up and set on the hot water heater. And when the images appear, 
I pin the developed film on the clothesline where my mother hangs the wet laundry in bad weather. Around five o'clock, my father gets home from work and he comes down to the cellar to see what the kids have been up to all day. <laughs> he finds the strip of negatives on the clothesline and he takes a closer look. He doesn't get angry, but he hardly ever gets mad at me anyway, and somehow he manages not to laugh. He says, I don't think we should tell your mother about this. And he confiscates my pornographic photographs. Generally, throughout my teens, I avoid cameras. I, I don't like having my picture taken because as a teenager, I don't much like my body. And the, the too small breasts, the too large thighs, and I don't much like my face, the, the glasses, the braces. In her teens, my mother was beautiful and photogenic, and I am neither, or I believe that I'm not. And then when I'm in my mid-twenties and newly married, an artist friend of my husband's offers to paint my portrait as a wedding gift. That painting hangs in my living room. The glasses and braces are gone, and the young woman in the portrait is not beautiful, certainly not glamorous, but her blue eyes are compelling. And there's something about her expression. The painting that hangs in my living room shows me in the process of becoming who I am. An interesting person, a storyteller, someone you might want to get to know, to be part of your life. Well, decades have passed since I sat for that painting, and time has inevitably taken its toll on my face, my body, too, although I, you know, I do what I can to keep my body healthy and functioning. And then life takes one of those unexpected turns, and I get involved in online dating. This is unexplored territory. Nothing has quite prepared me for the kind of men I'll meet <laughs> and the expectations I'll have to manage. Not long after I sign up for Match, I begin exchanging messages with a man who lives with a, lives in another state. I, he's a couple of decades younger and that worries me as much as it intrigues, but we have many common interests. As a boy, he dreamed of being an artist and his parents dismissed that idea as impractical, and instead he became a dentist, an orthodontist. He straightens the teeth of kids like, like the one I used to be, and in his, in his free time, he draws, paints, and takes photographs. There are weeks of emails and long conversations on the phone, and talking about how orthodontic techniques have changed, about what it was like when I was a kid with malocclusion. That's the scientific word for buck teeth. And eventually we meet in person. And he's, <laughs> he's handsome, he's personable, he's interesting and sexy, very sexy. During our second or third weekend together, he asks to photograph me, nude, nude. I imagine Goya's Naked Maha in the painting and Manet's Olympia. It's not my body the orthodont wants to focus on. It's one particular part of my body, and it's not my teeth. Shocked isn't the right word for my reaction. A startle, I guess, a surprise. My question is, why would you want to do that? Well, I've since learned, although I don't know why it took me so long to fi figure it out, is that men are visual creatures. So, now you're wondering, what did you do? Well, I said yes. For number of, any number of reasons that have nothing to do with the photography session that weekend, the relationship falls apart. 
age difference, distance, his lack of emotional availability, all of the above. I don't dislike my body anymore, as I did when I was an insecure teenager and as a middle-aged woman, afraid of getting older, of being rejected. I'm no longer young or even middle-aged, but I've come to value every wrinkle, every blemish, every scar, every ounce of flabby flesh, my whole body, not just one particular part of it. Surprisingly, the orthodontist and I have managed to maintain a casual friendship. We've gotten on with our separate lives, but we still talk on the phone now and then. A few months ago, he calls and we chat, and, and then he asks if I remember the photographs. Well, of course I do. He still has them on his computer, he says. And now you're wondering, do you feel embarrassed? The answer is, no, truthfully, I don't. I'll just delete those photos, I tell the orthodontist. I'll send you a snapshot of the painting that hangs in the living room, a portrait of me when I was 25. That's the real me, in the process then of becoming the me I am now, aging disgracefully. Read that and other stories on my blog at funnycarolyn.com. Leave me a message. Tell me what you think. Come back next week for episode number 19, Carolyn the Musical. And be sure to subscribe. I'm Carolyn Meyer, and yeah, I'm aging disgracefully. Mm-hmm.